So it's time for another ADC update. I thought I would do something a little different than usual and a little different to everybody else's ADC update. I'm self-employed, so instead of just doing my personal ADC like what I do and what most other people do, I figured I would do a full ADC update and show everything that I carry on a daily basis. So let's get cracking with the knocking. I'll start off my personal gear and then I'll show the other stuff. So I'll start off with the wallet. It's still the Maxpedition Urban. Uh, I don't think a lot's changed in here. It's a little bit chunkier than usual. I've got a little extra in there. And that's minus credit cards and whatnot. I took those out for the video. Uh, what I've got is uh, usual business cards. Again by uh, Vistaprint. Won't be using those after these ones have run out. Because Vistaprint fucked us over. But anyway, a little first aid kit. Slash a little tiny survival kit. I'm a little bit of a prepper, so I like to be prepared for stuff. Anyway, uh, it's a little bit chunkier because I've beefed up the uh, first aid kit a little bit. Extra plasters, extra um, antiseptic wipes. Uh, I've actually got more money in. Very rare I have money in the wallet. Just because I'm really poor. That's the main reason. I've uh, got a signal mirror and a... For a Fresnel lens, which I'll have to replace, it's starting to get random cracks in it. But anyway, that's pretty much my wallet. So for the watch, I've gone back to my old, if it wants to focus, Protec. I've had this for ages. And I'm getting tired of having things that I never use, so I just thought I would start using this again instead of just letting it lie around and gather dust. So, that's the watch. I think this is the original Protec. It's just the simple one with the compass and the barometer and thermometer and the altimeter. I think the newer version's got a whole load of other shite on it. They count down timers and ten alarms or other crap. I'm babbling on. Anyway, that's the watch. The Casio Protec. Original. At least I think it's the original. So now for my flashlight. Pleased to say I got my old faithful back. The Olight M10 Maverick managed to track down a battery charger and a couple of rechargeable batteries so got this back in operation thanks to uh, Heine Hayes so that's the flashlight back yeah, the keychain uh, it's changed a little bit I think since the last video I've got the uh, Gerber Shard back on there And the Phoenix E01, I just decided to put back on. Real handy little flashlight. Uh, the Phoenix NW20 whistle. And I've decided to keep the uh, screw pop utility knife on the keychain. Come in very handy over the last month, so that's earned its place. And uh, that's held onto the belt with the um, uh, Maxpedition Keeper. That's pretty much the keychain. So now for this bit of a belt carry. If I can get it sorted out. So I've got a uh, tops. If I can get the right way around. It's a Tops Sierra belt. Had this thing for years and it is the best belt I have ever owned. And on here, I don't carry anything really fancy. I got this pouch right here. 
which contains my Victorinox spirit. I've had this for two years now. And uh, the only real thing that's changed is the serrations on the blade. Have almost completely worn off. It used to look like this. So that's the main, the only real main thing that's changed with this multi tool after two years, and there's a very slight bit of play in the handles. That's pretty much it. I've been really impressed with this uh, multi tool. It's by far the best. Um, so that's that pouch. This pouch. I've got a Maxpedition Acantha pen, and I think this is a. It's definitely a Maxpedition, obviously. I can't remember the name of the pouch though. But in here, I've got my mobile and a writing area notepad. And that's all that I have in here. I like to carry this stuff on the belt just because it frees up a lot of space in the pockets. Because I don't like having my pockets crowded with a load of shit. So that's pretty much how I've been carrying stuff for about a year now, and it works out good. You get the odd funny look off of people, but I'm self employed so I can get away with that shit. Anyway. So when I'm not at work and I'm just walking around in public, a few things changed. First off, I don't carry anything on the belt. Uh, my keychain changes a little bit. I take off the screw pop because it's actually illegal to carry this in the UK because it is classed as a locking blade. So that comes off the keychain just in case it's really not worth the risk. Especially not for me anyway. So all I've got in the keychain is just the uh, Gerber shard, the flashlight, the whistle and the key. Uh, do carry a knife. It's a Victorinox camper. Been carrying this. I've had this thing for years and years. It's one of my favourite uh, Swiss Army knives. And I just carry the notepad and the pen. And the uh, phone. In that is so this is my normal ADC bag, it's a Maxpedition Monsoon Gear Slinger. And that's pretty much my ADC bag. Here's the contents of the ADC bag. Stainless steel water bottle with a titanium cup. Got a first aid kit with some uh, pads and gauze. Uh, fabric band-aids and a small suture kit some super glue got a fork knife and DC3 the little corkscrew for the uh, Victorinox Spirit with an eyeglass screwdriver because I wear eyeglasses and uh, the little bitten wrench set thing table flame lighter the tops pry probe and punch tool Uh, Phoenix TK20, sorry TA20. I think they've stopped making that one. Uh, Mechanics Fast Fits. Schmog. I did look that up, so I now know how to say it. And a bottle of Mountain Dew. And some shit roll, because it comes in handy for stuff. And that's pretty much the contents of the ADC bag. 
So I'll get on to the main equipment now that I usually carry. So this is my lawnmower. It is a Sovereign. XSS 40A. I've had this for almost two years now. It was very cheap, it was £125. And when I was going to get it, like I've said before, in one of my channel updates, when I said I was planning on going self employed, I mentioned that I was planning on getting the cheapest stuff to last a month and then I would go on to the best or on the better stuff. And when I said I was going to get this and I mentioned the price, everybody was saying, No, don't get it, it's shit, it won't last, it's absolute crap, it won't last three lawns. Well, this right here has just cut its 140th lawn today. And it cuts lawns from your average 6x6 foot lawn up to tennis court size lawns and I've never had a problem with it. I've changed the spark plug once. I've cleaned out the air filter 4 or 5 times. I've changed the oil twice. And it purrs like a kitten. Great lawnmower. Highly recommend it. It's not a self-driven one. Or a self-propelled one, it's a push mower. But, uh, yeah, this is my main workhorse. And it's been perfect. So that's my Sovereign lawnmower. Don't really feel any real need to change it, really. Unless I get some massive job, like a school field. But, uh, even then I'll just hire a ride-on lawnmower. So that's my mower. So this is my emergency backup lawnmower in case something happens with the petrol one. It's a Sovereign again. Hand push cylinder mower. The GT5614. And uh, I think I paid about £35 for this from Argos. And this thing is awesome it really is fucking awesome I cut my own lawn with this and this thing is perfect it doesn't leave very good stripes but uh yeah now the blades it's got four of those I think one two three four tell the light it's got five so uh, that's the emergency lawnmower. And I really like this thing. I might actually buy a second one. So this is my weed whacker. Or weed eater. Or strimmer. Whatever you want to call it. Again. It's a Sovereign. I'm not sponsored by Sovereign. Honest. And this is... Uh, the CB CDB 26A 26cc uh, two stroke and this is the takedown version and that's the head it's one of these bent heads I hate this design I prefer the straight shaft ones but uh this is all I could afford for the budget that I had two years ago. And I can safely say, after two years of use, I won't be going on to another... Well, I will be going on to a brush cutter. But as far as a weed whacker or a strimmer, whatever you want to call it, goes, I won't be buying another one because this is perfect for me. Had it for two years, it's been absolutely flawless. I've changed the spark plug once. And I just clean the air filter. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's been perfect. So that's my strimmer, weed whacker, weed eater, whatever you want to call it. And I highly recommend it. But as far as I hear, these are pretty much hit and miss. But uh, 
yeah, I just highly recommend the Sovereign. Sounds like somebody's thrown something around in the garden. But uh, I'll go check that out. So lastly for the power tools is my hedge trimmer. It is a Sovereign and it's uh, the 22.5cc hedge trimmer. This has been the only uh, thing I've had a problem with as far as Sovereign tools go. Um, well, it's not been a problem whatsoever really, it's just this uh, shield that protects you from the blades is just real cheap shit. Aluminium and it's bent all over the place. It's just very cheap, I mean I can bend that with my finger. Yeah, it's not very uh, good, pretty cheap, but uh, as far as the rest of the, uh, or as far as the hedge trimmer itself goes, pretty solid engine, it overheats quickly, but uh, I get about 30 minutes out of it before it overheats and I've got to switch it off and let it cool down, but that's the only real complaint I've got with it really, well that and the cheap blade guard thing. But uh, yeah, that's the hedge trimmer and that's pretty much it for my power tools. So I'll move on to the manual hand tools now. So I got a cheap carbon steel edging spade from Asda. No brand, nothing fancy. Cheap shovel, sorry to speed, by SJ. Had that for a few years. And a cheap old Draper uh, garden fork. And uh, edging shears by Smith and Wesson, not Smith and Wesson. Where the hell did I pull that out from? Wilkinson sword. Surprisingly quite expensive. These were twenty five pound, and they're brand new. I broke the last ones yesterday, so. The last ones cost about 5 quid, so hopefully these ones are going to last a lifetime for 25 quid. So this is my tree filling gear. I don't own a chainsaw because I don't have a chainsaw license. I don't need a license to buy a chainsaw, but if I have an accident on somebody's property and I don't have a license, then health and safety is going to be on me faster than the clap. So... I only fell small trees up to 20 feet and this has been doing great so far so this is just a cheap Hercules bow saw ultra fast with a Swedish steel and a 30 inch blade and my favourite piece of kit is my felon axe. It's a Hultifer's, I think it's a, well it's a Hultifer's Agdor. I think it's an HY20. Made in Sweden. With a homemade mask. And that's pretty much tree felling down. So this is my work bag. So as far as the contents of this bag goes, I got some spare cord for the strimmer. A um, multi-purpose tool from Wolf Garden, an extension bit for the uh, multi-tool thing, a cheapo axe from Asda comes in very handy, a weeding tool 
Not sure who it's made by. It was originally had three forks like this. But I snapped off the top bar which had two forks coming down to make one weeding tool. And that comes in really handy for uh, weeding paths and uh, borders. I've got these edging scissors. These are retractable ones so I can squeeze it and they just disappear into the handle. Quite handy. Uh, some pruners. Or pruning shears. Uh, vintage hand fork from the 1930s. This belonged to my grandmother and uh, they don't make them like this anymore. It's like six mil well about four and a half, five millimeters thick steel and it's not hollow or anything, it's just solid steel. I can pass that down to my grandkids. That's what I love about vintage stuff. If I had my own way, I would replace all of this plastic handle crap with vintage gear. But it's hard to get, so that's the only, well, it's not the only vintage item, but that's one of the uh, vintage items. Anyway, um, I can't remember what these are called, but I use them for fine straight edges. If I'm re-edging a border or if I'm planting hedges. A uh, pruning saw. Here's the other vintage item. This is my backup emergency hedge trimmer. And these are some really old, well they're not really old, I think they were made in the 1970s. It just says carbon steel made in England. I have got a pair upstairs which were made in 1925 in London. But those are, are more, they're more of a collector's thing. So I wouldn't use those, but these are my beaters, my 1970s thereabouts, no brand name, carbon steel, made in England, edge and shears. And just cheap uh, measuring tape by Globemaster, nothing fancy, and that is my ADC gear for this month, my full ADC gear. The only thing missing is I need to get some lopping shears. These have been doing great uh, with the uh, saw, but uh, I want to just get some lopping shears. So I'm going to see if I can track down a vintage pair of lopping shears to go with these. If not, I'll just buy some generic cheap crop from one of the supermarkets but yeah uh, lop and shears um, there was something else that I wanted as well like a garden claw um, soil tillering thing and uh, I think that's pretty much it that would complete the kit really so yeah that's the end of this video. Not done yet though. Uh, about two months ago I expanded my business from gardening into pest control as well. So I'll show my pest control gear in the next video. But that's it for this video. Dragged it on for too long. And that is my full EDC gear for this month. A little bit different to your usual sort of EDC video. I'm not just showing my personal gear. So I hope you liked it, and uh, I'll try and do some gardening videos soon as well, so yeah, I'm not going to babble on anymore, that is my ADC gear for this month, uh, thanks for watching, and goodbye.